All right. In this video, we're going to do more derivation and more circle derivation um, from a randomly oriented stress. So the first thing we're going to do is draw ourselves a plane. We're going to call the plane P. And we're going to say that P has an area of one meter squared. So the sides of P, all the sides are one meter. <clears throat> and we're going to give a randomly oriented stress to P. So it doesn't have to be normal to P, just a nice randomly oriented stress. And the goal of the Mohr circle um, is to have a diagram that will relate the terms of that, taking that randomly oriented stress and breaking it apart so that we understand stress in terms of the normal stress applied to the plane, the shear stress applied to the plane, sigma one, sigma three, and the angle the plane is, is oriented at. So the way that we do this is we actually take this plane and instead we consider it to be a prism. So we give it some sides. We're going to call this A, C, and B. And we're going to think about this again as a prism. So we're going to give it some three-dimensional uh, shape to it. And so this backside, let's call this backside um, A, C, call that D, E, A, C, D, sorry, D, E. And we'll call this F. So this bottom side um, is going to become B, C, D, F. That's those sides. And then the top, we'll just keep referring to that as P, because that's a, the top of our, our, our plane, our prism plane. Now, let's imagine that we're going to have a sigma 1 and a sigma 3. So those two principal stresses the sigma 1 being the biggest and sigma 3 being the smallest, we're going to apply them to this prism. So let's let sigma 1 be horizontal coming in from the side. And we'll let sigma 3 be vertical being applied to this bottom face. Okay. So that means that this side right here, CB, if we were just to cut that end triangle piece out of it, CB is going to be perpendicular to sigma 3, and AC is going to be perpendicular to sigma 1. All right, now these aren't just, uh, these are stresses, right? And stresses have to be applied to an area, not a line, not just a line. So we need to figure out the areas of A, C, D, E, and B, C, D, F. So most of you are probably going to be familiar with um, the trigonometric ratios, like sine of theta being equal to the opposite over hypotenuse, and cosine theta being equal to an adjacent length over a hypotenuse. But what you may not know is that this same formulas can apply to, to areas. So I can say sine of theta can be equal to an area that's opposite divided by an area of a hypotenuse side of a triangular prism. Same thing for cosine. These can actually be areas. So what we can do then is we can come back to our prism where P is the hypotenuse side, and we can say that if this angle is theta, and we know that P is one, we can say that the opposite side, or the opposite, um, call it, yeah, side, this down here, that's opposite to um, this angle, that that can be expressed as sine of theta is the area opposite, so the area of the bottom, or BCDF, divided by the area of P, which we know is 1. So we can do the same thing with this side over here. This side is going to be the adjacent side to theta. So the area of this side can be expressed as cosine theta 
is area of ACDE divided by one meter squared. So basically the area of this side is cosine theta and the area of this bottom side is sine theta. Now let's say that we wanna calculate the force of the stress on that side. So we know that stress is force per unit area. So that means that force is going to be area times stress. So the force on this side over here, which is gonna be a horizontal force, from just from this side, is going to be sigma one times the area of that side, which we know to be cosine theta. And it's acting in a positive direction, it's acting to the right, so we're gonna leave this as a positive. And the force in the vertical direction, acting upward is sigma three times the area of this side, which we know is sine theta. But these aren't complete, right? This isn't all of the forces acting in the horizontal and all of the forces acting in the vertical. And the way we know that is we said that there was an, a randomly oriented stress. So let's go back to that randomly oriented stress and let's think about it only in terms of the side ABC. Okay, here's A, C, B, and we had a randomly oriented stress. Okay, that stress is going to have normal and shear components. The normal component is going to act down and be perpendicular to the plane. And the shear component is gonna act up and go parallel to the plane. And the way I knew how to draw these angles was I knew about vector addition and decomposition. So we're going tip to tail, tip to tail to get back to this corner. Okay, but again, we wanna know about horizontal and vertically oriented stresses and forces, and these aren't even horizontal and vertical. So that means that this sigma n is also going to need to be decomposed into its vectors. Okay, so let's just take sigma n for example. Here's the line a to b, and here's sigma n, and we know that that's a right angle. Now, a to b has this angle up here that's theta, and this one over here that we could call alpha. And alpha is kind of describing the amount that a, b has been rotated up from the horizontal. So if I imagine this is kind of like a hinge, originally sigma n would have been oriented vertically and it would have been perpendicular to AB when it was horizontal. But if this is like a door hinge and it's opened up, it's rotated by alpha, sigma N has also rotated by alpha. And that means that this angle right here is alpha. So I'm gonna take sigma N and I'm gonna draw a little right triangle. Here's my sigma n, still oriented like that. And I'm gonna draw some horizontal and vertical components. This angle is alpha, this is a right angle. And so based on similar triangles, I know that if this is alpha and this is a right angle, that this angle over here has to be theta. So now I can use trig ratios to say, this is the adjacent side to theta. So this one has to be sigma n cosine theta, and this one is opposite, so it has to be sigma n sine theta. Now this one is acting to the left, so this is going to end up being a negative term, and this one is acting down, so it's gotta be a negative term. And again, that's just tip to tail um, vector math. So now let's think about shear. Shear stress over here is also not oriented uh, perfectly horizontally or vertically. So we're gonna have to decompose that vector. 
And again, by similar triangles, we can say that this is um, theta, this is alpha. So this side over here is going to be cosine theta times the shear stress. And down here, this is going to be sine theta times the shear stress. Tip to tail, math tells us that this is going to be a positive term. And this one's oriented to the left. So that's going to be a negative term. Now, important thing to think about here is that this block with P being the plane at the top, it's not moving. And that means that all of those horizontal forces have to add to zero and all of the vertical forces also have to, act to add to zero. So let's do the horizontal forces first. The horizontal forces that add to zero are going to be that positive sigma one cosine theta term. Going over here, a horizontal term is going to be the minus shear stress times sine theta. And then this horizontal term over here, minus sigma n cosine theta. Now we can do all of our vertical ones. And again, this one's horizontal, this one's vertical. So for our vertical stresses, or forces, sorry, Let's do the sigma 3 sine theta first. And then we'll do, how about this uh, positive shear stress. And we'll do this negative normal stress. Okay, so now we have really basic terms that describe how the forces sum in, in the horizontal and vertical both to zero. And that means that we can st start solving for um, shear stress and normal stress. So let's solve for shear stress first. Um, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use this horizontal term first. So I'm going to do, I'm going to add shear sine theta to one side, because I know it's added to zero. And I'm going to leave the other terms on the other side. Okay. And then I'm going to divide by sine theta. Sorry. And now I have a a way to express shear stress. And I can do the same thing solving for shear stress down here. So I can say tau cosine theta is, and I'm going to subtract and add these to the other side. And then I'm going to divide by cosine. You might be thinking to yourself, why isn't she factoring out sine theta? You could do that. That's fine. Doesn't bother me. All right, so now we have two terms for uh, the tau or the shear stress, and we can repeat for normal stress. And if you repeated that for normal stress, I'm not going to show that exact work because it's, it's algebra, but what you would get is these terms. and sigma n. Divided by, there we go. All right, so now the cool thing is we've got two ways to talk about um, that normal stress and two ways to talk about the shear stress. And that means that kind of, we have a system of equations. We can start setting things um, equal to each other. So I'm going to grab another piece of paper and um, we will call this part one to this video.